New York. What is up with this weather? You've got me walking outside looking like this. Y'all, today has been one of those days. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. But you know what? Silver lining, there's still some things to be thankful for. I woke up this morning, I made it safely to Denver, my hair and makeup's on point. Copper, you ready to go to the vet? <laughs> Copper, blessed be the fruit. The, I haven't seen Game of Thrones in so long. Can you say praise be? I stopped the season four and then I stopped. Say praise be. Okay, I don't know if he's in it. Have you seen May the Lord open. So I just got out of the bathroom and <laughs> Rachel's sister is here. And look what's on the TV. What is she doing to me? What is she doing to me? Okay, so a lot of you have been asking questions as to why I'm in Indianapolis. Um, it is my first time here. Excited to be here, but even more excited that I got to do a really, really fun interview with one of your, oh my, where am I? There I am. Let me just stand by the light so I don't disappear on you guys again. As I was saying, I'm here for a very fun interview, and I got to interview a Colts player. Uh, to give you a hint, he's a seasoned player, um, won a number of Super Bowls, and multitasking at its best, okay? This, this, oh, and I'm live tweeting about the game. Check it out. One of his favorite pastimes is hunting. Can you guess who that is? Probably so, that was pretty easy. Fina loves it's Miss Fina D coming to you all from Vina Entertainment News. Yes, I miss you guys too. <laughs> I know it's been a while. So this video is going to focus more on Rachel and not Rachel and Bryant. Now, you guys already know the last video I uploaded, I posted this right here where Rachel basically explained that, you know, when they first came off the show, it was understandable for people to be into their lives and they were very comfortable, you know, sharing their lives with their supporters and you know just put, putting everything about their lives on blast but then there comes a time where you just have to step back and do things for yourself and at this point she's wanting to keep some parts of, re of her relationship you know private and her caption was instagram isn't a reflection of real life it is a reflection of what one chooses to show you just because my instagram feed lacks a picture of brian does not mean that he is missing from my life sometimes it is nice to keep some privacy to your relationship and keep some things just between the two of you so my mcm goes to the man who is a permanent fixture in my life and not just one on my Instagram profile. So with Rachel posting that, you already then know. Let's see. Now after Rachel posted that, but this person wrote, um, Rachel, obviously there are many private things between you and your fiance and no one is asking you to share those things. However, you've made yourself a public figure and your relationship with him began publicly on national television and the longtime fans of the show propelled you and him into the spotlight so of course those same fans want to continue to follow your journey and when they don't see pics of him on your page there will be you know there will be speculation and instagram is a reflection of real life for those of us that are authentic which is how you've always portrayed portrayed yourself and how I portray myself on social media. Of course, people can be fake, but they don't need social media to do that. They can be fake right in front of you. So chill out. Don't make yourself a public spectacle if you don't want scrutiny of all forms. This person clearly missed the point and Rachel <laughs> responded exactly with what I just, you know, said. Uh, you clearly missed the point. You clearly missed the point. This other person responded, um, what's your point? We got hers and it's about in her relationship. 
if she spends a week without posting her fiance and her in a shot. That kind of suspicious inquiry daily is exhausting and the constant rumors of breakups hurt. These are real people. In brief, give them benefit of the doubt and a darn break. God knows they need it. All right, uh, Rachel, I hope you guys relish in your love and life and not let it get to you so much. Fan girling hard here. All right. And of course, you know, the R&B hive <laughs> came out. So I'm not going to read all of those comments, but this is basically what uh, Rachel is going through. This person wrote, I agree with what Rachel said. Look, also Rachel and Brian met on television. That doesn't mean that she has to display a picture of Brian. So I'm not going to read all of that. This person basically missed the point. She was just saying, look guys, yes, I appreciate the love and everything. Once in a while, we will share but I'm not going to live my life with, oh my God, we have to post on Instagram. We have to do this video. We have to do this because, you know, we're going to lose our fans. Or There are people who actually have slide in my DM talking about most of the other girls who left the um, bachelorette, who, who were the bachelorette. They have over a million um, Instagram followers and Rachel is still at 800 and some mile. All of these things. Um, Rachel is an attorney. Rachel is a sports <laughs> caster and broadcaster. Rachel is doing, I'm not saying the other girls are not doing real things in their life, but Rachel is doing real things. I can guarantee you right now, she's not losing sleep over Instagram followers you know what i'm saying it always you know i laugh out loud when people actually send me messages about instagram followers like really there are more important things than instagram followers i will understand if her 100 percent income was based on instagram because she's an influencer then i will understand that but this girl have jobs she got it going on she has a career you know whether one person unfollow her or five people follow her she's not losing sleep over that she's just basically saying look guys just because i don't post it doesn't mean we're not together so with that being said my point is you're not going to see a lot of brian and rachel when i do these videos because of what rachel wrote you know she wants to have some privacy in her life but you did see the video brian is still very much present as he was joking around because he came out and rachel and her sister were watching <laughs> the lip sync battle you saw that you also saw brian in the picture with her family her dad being on and you know being a judge for 20 years um lordship Lindsay, and congratulations to him that's not something a man who is not important in your life will be a part of. If Brian and Rachel was over, Brian would not be in the picture at that event. But Rachel posted these beautiful images here. When traveling, life's journey is good to have a sister's, a sister's hand to hold onto. And if you go through these beautiful images, and they're just laughing, having a good time, and look who's in the picture, Brian. And you know, some people are saying, uh, did you guys plan it to have the two white guys? You know, Rachel will beat you up, okay? Brian is not white. <laughs> Complexion, okay? Complexion is what people are coming for. It's not about race, but someone actually did write that you guys plan to put the two white men at the end. And also, they felt like Rachel was influenced by seeing her older, her other sister relationship. But like I said, love is love. And that's what it is. Not by race. But um, I did see some of those comments. So, Brian is still in the picture. He's very much present in Rachel's life. Rachel is still doing her thing as a sportcaster in her radio show on ESPN on Sunday. And Brian is still doing his thing as far as Dr. Apostolo. And so, I do want to talk about her article with Texas Monthly. I thought that it was very powerful. Now, my voice sounds exciting and vibrant and all that, but when reading the article, my voice dropped and it sounds low. It's because I was going through my allergy movement. So I apologize if it gets boring there for a second and it sounds like I'm not the, you know, what's up if you're not love type of person with the interview. I apologize, but I'm not going to re-record it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that because I do believe that this is, um, this was one of and is still one of her best interviews um, ever. So let's go ahead and jump into that article. But Brian is still, you know, present. They're still doing good guys and he's still in the picture.
I really wanted to talk about was the interview with Texas Monthly. If you missed that interview, I'm going to put the link in the description below because to date, it was one of, I'm not even one of, it was her best interview ever. I just love the conversation. I love how professional it was yet the interviewer was still able to hit every single point and I mean his his voice is just like perfection it was an amazing interview so I wrote some key points down so I'm going to go over them they might not be in order because you know I was just writing things as I listened I listened to it the first time without writing anything I just basically listened and enjoyed it interview and then when I was done I went back and listened to it again so that I could write down my key points all right so you know they talk about race of course and she basically you know talked about the Lee and Kenny situation and she talked about how you know they don't have phones TV and things like that and the only way she would have known that was going on in the house is if someone was you know had come to her and told her she was upset that that right there took up most of her season those two guard those two guys fighting in a whole racial situation she talked about that she talked about how you know the current person who's i don't know my apologies guys i still cannot bring myself to use the p word when i talk about this person but a person who is running currently running things in the country she talked about how based on the way that he does things and the hate that Right now, the reason why racism is at a different level is because that person is making it easier for people to be more bold with the way how they feel and expressing their feelings. She talked about the Becca and Garrett situation, you know, and she said she understand at first that Becca did not have her phone, you know, because they can't have their phones. They have to focus and concentrate on the show. She said, however, if that was her, which she was grateful it's not her. And, you know, they came out of the bachelor bubble and she got her phone back. That would have been a deal breaker. She would not have continued a relationship with Brian because Gary did not like one or two. He liked over eight, you know, different posts. And that just shows that's who he is. She also talked about how when Garrett um, apologized, he did not say that he was basically apologizing because that's not how he felt. He apologized if the things he liked made people feel a certain way. He did not apologize saying that this is not who I am. So she said, and it's also very interesting how you know, Chris and everybody else over there in the Bachelor Nation just swept it under the rug. Basically, had Gary been a black man or someone else that did something despicable, it was going to be bigger. She also said the reason why she did not speak about it is because she's truly friends with Becca. And basically, out of respect for her friendship with Becca, she did not want to be a part of the problem of blasting that even more. And that's why she's been very quiet about it. Speaking about more racism, you know, the interviewer asked her how does she tone out racism. She said she still gets it on social media, but it's not as bad. But she understood that it, you know, it's going to come with a territory. She also said that this is the first time seeing a black woman being sought after that way. And it was coming from non-black men. Basically saying that, you know, watching the show you don't see that this image a lot you know and then for it for the attention and people who were interested in dating her to be coming from non-black men she already knew she had to deal with that she also knew that she had to deal with on her side her people judging her for not picking a black man so yeah it was a very insightful interview um 
she said that it feels good when a mother comes up to her and say that you know because of her being on the show her, her daughter watched the show and that you know just things like that it makes her feel good that she was able to you know change things around for that franchise she said her of course her skills as a lawyer helped her position on the show um, she was able to interrogate people how do you feel about me why are you here and things like that um, she said she was able to use that to determine who Brian was and that he's even better in you know off the show so he talked about her ESPN radio show and for the people who are asking you know Rachel should be on TV why she's not on TV and all of that she does little spots here and there with ESPN but she said the reason why ESPN is not really giving her the green light on like a show on TV and it makes sense you know even though she is an attorney okay <laughs> people associate her to the show so right now she just have to prove herself be on radio and, and on other spots showing her degree showing her experiences and things like that before they can you know throw her out there because their viewers know her as this black girl who was on the bachelor read and that's it and nothing else you know so but she's actually an attorney you know she practiced sports law and all of that so they're testing her on the radio to familiarize the audience with her and her skills then of course you have seen her on different sex segments on espn and then from there she's hoping that it would turn into something even bigger uh, she also talked about being labeled the angry black woman at her reunion and she also blamed Chris Harrison for that and she also blamed the other guy for that she said she came out after she had to sit there for three and a half hours and watched you know her season finale which you know was the first time doing that then when she came out she was already upset that Peter told her that the other guy told her she will live a mediocre life and then he turned around and said that he felt like he was being attacked which she said I didn't raise my voice I didn't scream I didn't do anything but the moment Peter said that and the moment Chris Harrison asked me why was I angry I was labeled as an angry black woman and that girls from other race can be angry and raise the verse and do certain things and it's cute when a black woman does the same thing she's an angry black woman or all of these different stereotypes being thrown at her so she talked about that so she agrees with you know Colin Kaepernick and everything that he stands for she did not agree with Serena Williams reaction and actions when that situation happened where she was accused of cheating and then you know she was also fine and you know she just flipped out um, Rachel is actually on the opposite end of this one she does not she understand she said that she feels like the woman that we saw on the court that day was a woman who had all of this pent up aggression from the way how she's been treated Serena Williams and that day she just ended up you know putting it all out there however she said that she does not agree that a Serena reaction and making it by race because there are other white tennis players who have done worse and got the same fine I'm glad this is on the you know Texas monthly and if you know if people listen to it and all of that but yeah you know if it had been shared on a broader platform our girl was going to be chewed up but I love her honesty that even in the midst of this possibly getting out and people coming for her she was still honest and truthful and said that that Serena Williams overreacted so hey I you know I love an honest person um okay another thing that she said that was very interesting she said her breakup was with the other guy was four hours four yes you heard that right four hours and all we saw was this short you know clip she said these are the things about Brian that she's upset that you know people didn't get to see you know like just all of that but um, she was saying that yeah four hours and we only got to see a few minutes so she said that when she came out you know the reason why you know she was being careful about not going in on the other guy too much is because she was trying to respect the relationship that she was in and not making it you know her responses look like oh yeah she's still in love with this guy and Brian is just basically the one who gave her a rank talking about how they said the other guy was crying backstage but she didn't see that one tear <laughs> um, 
she was talking about being in a five-year relationship and she and that person breaking up and so she just wanted to start over and start fresh she said that at the end of the day she just wants to be looked at she's hoping that it can go from Rachel Lindsay the bachelorette to Rachel Lindsay the attorney to oh that's Rachel Lindsay from ESPN you know and her own talk show or something like that she or, or that's Rachel you know she's looking forward to get back to that moment because you know when you do get in the bachelor bubble you know it can be hard to burst out and she's just happy that she's freeing herself from all of that and her five-year relationship she had hit a wall so when you know her co-workers or colleagues came in the office and told her that she should register she was like you know why not let's just register for the show she said you know the black girl is always the first one to be sent home and all of that and look at what she did she changed all of that and that's amazing okay she also talked about not letting the bachelorette define who you are and also people not taking people on the show too seriously just letting yourself go and living in the moment and all of that um you know i already talked about the public forgetting that she's an attorney and she's basically in the process instead of mine of reintroducing herself um they talk about the artificial demand and the speed that people fall in love she says she's still skeptical even though she found the love of her life on the show that it's possible she said all day she pinched herself and trying to understand like wow you know how is this even possible i mean we know how it's possible but yeah she said you have to surrender yourself mentally um into the show for it to work but don't lose yourself in the process but that's how you win if you don't win you end up finding more by yourself i mean i just think that article was just amazing amazing and rachel also talked about jenna and Jordan and she talked about how you know Jenna is a con artist if this is true she's a con artist and that Jenna actions diminishes what she and Brian has mm. you know because people already don't take the show seriously and people are already judging her relationship and when it's going to end and people like Jenna go on a show for business opportunity um, are basically proving her point but of course she is aware that jenna i'm not sure if she's aware that jenna is trying and i don't think it was shade of an attack at all she was just explaining how she felt you know about certain things but but i'm gonna go ahead and end it here my friend i love i wish you all an amazing day if you're not subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up also turn on notifications so when i do post your way that i posted and i will see you all in the comment section remember always have the god bless attitude which is being positive at all times and seeing a good every situation have a great day guys god bless